Please listen carefully. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, this is Gabriel Hernandez of The Boxing Wire. As usual, thank you guys for listening. Um, it's September 14th. Um, going to be covering the Jose Ramirez Jr. versus Orozco uh, championship fight in Fresno. And uh, I'm basically doing this road podcast, something a little bit different. Usually I'm sitting around. Uh, I'm kind of doing this just on the fly, piece by piece. And uh, so basically, I thought it'd be kind of interesting. I decided at Greyhound, uh, for those of you who don't know, I live in the San Fernando Valley, which is in L.A. County, about 20 miles north of downtown L.A., as I, I, I've been noticing the numbers recently, like, I got people from Pakistan, India, Hong Kong, the Philippines, um, Bolivia, Japan, I mean, Russia, a lot of, a lot of different places, uh, which is, it blows my mind, uh, how so many people are finding the podcast, and, uh, so for those of you who don't know where I am, um, Fresno's basically about three miles north of where I live. Instead of driving myself, I decided to take the Greyhound because uh, it has Wi-Fi and I don't have to worry about driving. Um, I can work, you know, or nap, eat, do whatever I want. Uh, and uh, my journey started at 6.50 a.m. San Fernando, California, which is near where I live. And uh, I'm now arrived at Fresno. I got here right on time, so shout out to Greyhound. They did a great job. Um, it was a packed bus. I was kind of afraid at first. Had to sit next to a gentleman. Looked kind of sketchy. He had a, you know, one of those weird emphysema coughs. A uh, really tiny guy. A really, uh, you know, skinny man. Older. I didn't know how old he was. I mean, I knew he had to be anywhere from between 60 years old or 100. I knew that. Um, so the first hour of the trip, I was pretty quiet, had my earbuds in, uh, worked a little bit on the website, um, stayed quiet. We made a stop at Bakersfield. After that, I, I said, what, well, you know, it's kind of weird, we're just quiet. So I introduced myself. Uh, next thing I know, for the, for the last two hours of the trip, nonstop conversation with this dude, my man, Steve. Sorry for the background noise, guys. I was looking for somewhere quiet uh, to record this, but apparently Fresno has no quiet places at all. There's cars everywhere. There's no restaurants or businesses near uh, the Greyhound station that where you can actually sit. Uh, so that kind of sucks. Um, anyways, I met this cool ass dude, Steve. Turned out to be 84. He's telling me about his whole life. He worked on an oil rig for 12 years. He was a crab fisherman. He used to catch uh, catfish, rattlesnakes. Uh, he was a farmer in Michigan for 28 years. So he's just telling me, you know, all these things and all, all, the, all his adventures in life. And I guess my point is, which was, you know, cliche, don't judge a book by its cover. Um, here I thought this guy was a weird, I don't know, maybe, you know, a little bit drunk or a little bit crazy. Turns out he's the sanest human being in the world, the nicest man in the world, uh, the most respectful person, one of the most respectful people I've ever met. He had a southern accent, a Louisiana accent, so it was cool. I'm, I got a new friend out of it. I'm here in Fresno. Um, I'm gonna, now I'm on my way. I'm just waiting right now for uh, an Uber or a Lyft to take me down to uh, the Save Mart Center. Uh, where the event's going to happen. I'm here a little bit early. Uh, the doors don't open until about 2.30. It's right now, it's 11.30. So I got about three hours to kill. There's a Starbucks across the street, so you know I, can, I have somewhere to kind of sit down, relax until I get into the event. First fight's going to be at 3. Um, the actual TV, uh, televised portion of it, is going to be at 7 for you guys. Uh, so you're going to watch that on ESPN. That's going to be the televised portion. Uh, I'm going to get in there at 3 for the undercards, so I'm going to be uh, tweeting about that, 
Facebooking, Instagramming, and check out on Instagram. I'm gonna post a picture of Steve as well, and I'm kind of posting pictures of Fresno of what I've seen so far. I saw a cool little like tile mural that I took a picture of, and uh, it's awesome. So I'm gonna piece this throughout the day as things go. If anything interesting happens, and I'm also gonna try to do what I did last week, which is from inside the arena, give you guys an inside view, an inside look. Uh, anything happens that you, you know that you can't pick up on TV, um, I'll let you guys know about it. And uh, yeah, I'll probably release it tonight on the way home from um, from the uh, the fight. Ramirez Orozco, I'm taking the Greyhound back, so I'm gonna be home in the early, in the wee hours of uh, Sunday. Listen, I don't mind. I don't mind traveling. It's kind of a cool, a cool little adventure. And uh, like I said, I don't have to worry about driving. I can either get some work done or get some sleep. Um, so I'm good with that. And uh, another thing, guys, this is going to be a, bo- a, a boxing podcast. So don't worry. Eventually, we'll get to the boxing as the the day progresses. I just wanted to let you guys know to once again, please follow me at at the Boxing Wire. On all social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, send me a message, follow, uh, also YouTube. Started releasing videos on YouTube, uh, The Boxing Wire. Everything's The Boxing Wire. Any any social media you're on, The Boxing Wire, and then obviously TheBoxingWire.com uh, for all the articles, videos, all the content. That I that I put out there is on the on the boxingwire.com. So don't forget to visit that, and also please share um, any content you you take a look at, any podcast you listen to. Please share it, uh, whatever your favorite social media platform is, and especially if you know people who are boxing fans, you definitely want to share it with them. It's highly appreciated. And uh, big news, um, I been looking for some affiliate sponsors, you know, companies to work with uh, to kind of you know support to help support the show because as you know this is basically done for free it's a free podcast so you know there has to be it has to be monetized in certain ways and one of the ways is a uh, sponsorship so I'm, you know I'm so happy and so proud uh, to announce uh, our new sponsors our, our first sp- main sponsor that I'm pretty excited about is fanatics.com so that's fanatics.com and it's basically a store that sells every sporting um, shirts, shoes, all all kinds of gear from all every single sport you could think of for the big time fans. You know, baseball, basketball, football, hockey, soccer, boxing, cricket. Well, I don't know about cricket. I have to check up on that. Um, so please, please support. And what I did is I put a banner of all three. Um, all three sponsors at the very top of the web page of every web page uh, the boxing wire you'll see at the very top you'll see like three banners uh, you'll see the the boxing you'll see the fanatics.com banner uh, the second the second um, sponsor I like to welcome and thank is uh, called touch of modern so touch of modern is you know such a pretty it's an awesome website especially if you're a guy they sell it everything on there man and then what's so great about it it's like high-end products you got men's apparel shoes men's grooming wall art techs and gadgets um you got stuff for the outdoor for your pets travel watches food and drink uh, so touch a modern specializes in bringing high quality ultra ultra modern designs to customers at affordable prices so, you know, they offer a wide variety of products ranging from furniture to electronics, not typically sold through traditional uh, retail outlets. Like, one of the things I saw that I thought was pretty cool was, like, a little miniature uh, nano dro- um, drone. Like, the drone literally fits in your pot in the palm of your hand. You could fly that. I don't know. I'm kind of a geek, so I thought that was kind of cool. So, Touch of Modern. And uh, the third the third sponsor I'm pretty proud to uh, to have on is uh, Stars. The, the movie channel stars um, to, uh, I, I believe in the stuff that I put out here as far as like sponsorship that would make sense 
to the to the people I think my audience that are, that are listening to me. Um, I'm assuming most of you are men, <laughs> and for the women, I love you too. For the ones that are listening, don't think I don't. Um, but Stars is such an awesome channel. Right now, they're offering a seven day free trial. So for seven days, you can check it out. I already signed up myself uh, yesterday. I had a little bit of time. I saw Jumanji. I hadn't seen Jumanji yet. I'm one of the only people that never seen it. And I also saw the new Spider-Man. Uh, so just, just to give you an example of the type of movies they have. Uh, but also what, what makes it interesting is like they have a bunch of older movies like from back in the day. Uh, you know, they got like that movie Up, Dumb and Dumber. I mean, just just classics that you forgot, you know, from the from the '90s and from the early 2000s. Uh, so I think it's a really it's a really cool channel. Uh, so what I w need you guys to do is just go ahead and just go to the website, click on the Stars logo, and uh, sign up for that seven day free trial. The weekend's here. Might as well sign up, see a few movies, see how you like it. If you don't like it, then you know cancel. Uh, so just do me a big favor, just go to the website, click on that, and, uh, you know, sign up for the, it's a seven-day file, it doesn't cost you anything. Um, Fanatics.com, thank you again. Touchofmodern.com, thank you again. And Stars, thank you again uh, for being a part of the Boxing Wire uh, family. And I uh, hope, you know, we'll do beat, we, uh, Supporting each other for a long time to come guys. So if you're interested in the fanatics.com What I'm going to do is I uh, what I did is I created indi individual like links and banners for certain products for each For each sponsor so they have their own page. So like if you're interested in the fanatics.com what you would do if I mean it's easy you just got to go to the boxingwire.com and click on the on the on the actual banner at the top but if you want you can also go to the boxingwire.com backslash fanatics and then there'll be like multiple banners, multiple links to, to specific products and things like that. So like say if you're interested in uh, jerseys or shirts or hats or shoes, you know, you'd be able to click on it specifically rather than just clicking on the on the main ad. And the ads are on every single page of the, of the Boxing Wire, so all new content from here on out that's coming out. You look at the very top of the page, whether on your mobile phone or on your uh, tablet or desktop, you're always going to see the, the three sponsors at the very top, so click on those. Uh, for Touch of Modern, you would go to The Boxing Wire backslash T-O-M, so Tom. The Boxing Wire backslash Tom. Instead of just writing Touch of Modern, figure just, you know, T-O-M makes it easy. And uh, lastly... Uh, for the uh, for stars, it's just basically uh, the boxing wire backslash uh, stars. All right, actually, you know, I'm sorry, I screwed that up. For for the stars, it's the boxing wire backslash seven day trial. Okay, so that's the boxing wire seven day trial because that's the specific promotion. At their running right now so they want people to, to to head on out and they want you to see it and it, it's a really good channel man I, I'm telling you I'm, I'm just not saying it because it's a sponsor I'm saying it because uh, I actually ordered it and I actually liked so you know some of the movies I was scrolling through I'm like man the, I haven't seen that movie in so long so the boxing wire backslash seven day trial and like I get like I said those are specific pages where you'll be able to get multiple banners and multiple links, uh, so that way you. And also, the, there's going to be content on there as well. The the latest the uh, podcast, and all the latest links to to the articles that that are happening currently. So you're just not going to that page just for a bunch of ads. There's also going to be links to to the boxing wire content. All right, guys. Well, right now, like I said, I'm still waiting for the Uber and the Lyft. I'm looking at my phone. They should be here in about a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause, and then I'll continue on uh, later on once I get to the Save Mart Center, and once I get to that area, and I'll give you guys an update once I get the credential, once I get in the building, 
etc., etc. All right, guys, talk to you. Talk to you in a second. All right, guys, it's uh, 3:31. I'm sitting on press row now. I hung out at Starbucks for about three hours. Got a little bit of work done. I'm sitting ringside in the third row. Uh, look for me. I'm the guy with eyeballs, uh, hair, um, arms. Um, I got eyebrows as well. So, um, yeah, what's going to happen now is I'm going to go ahead and uh, update you on each undercard fight that's not televised. Um, all, the, all these fights are going to be on ESPN Plus. So if you have ESPN Plus, you can always go and uh, watch them. You know, cause if you do the subscription, that'll be saved. And you can uh, re-watch them anytime you want. And obviously, the main event, I'll go ahead and give you an update on that. And also on my trip home. Okay, guys. I'll be back. Going the distance here at St. Martin Center, we go to the judges' scorecard to determine a winner. Judge Russell scores it. 95-94 in favor of Mokata. Judge Sandoval, 95-94 in favor of Coria. And Judge Villarreal scores it 95-94. In favor of the winner by way of split decision. Hiroki Okada. guys heard that but uh, the win went to Hiroki Okata, Okara by a uh, um, split decision. That was a very very close fight, very entertaining fight. Both gentlemen gave it their all but um, neither went back down. Okada actually hit the mat uh, in the last 30 seconds of the fight but he got back up and he survived. Um, so it was a very entertaining fight, guys. So it was just an update on the first bout of the night. And uh, I'll come back and let you guys know how the second fight goes. So in the second fight of the night, uh, Brian Vasquez um, of San Jose, uh, originally from Costa Rica, or I'm sorry, from San Jose, Costa Rica, defeated Carlos Cardenas of Venezuela. Uh, via unanimous decision. Now uh, we got uh, our third fight coming up. Alexander Vesputin was undefeated 10 0 with AKOs out of Oxnard. That's for the USBA 147 pound title. He's fighting Alan Sanchez from Mexico, Guadalajara. Uh, 23 1 and 10 KOs. You can hear the music in the background. Uh, third fight coming up, guys. So I'll give you an update on the winner. Stay tuned. Thank you for listening. I'm back you know, in the third fight of the night it was for the 147 pound USBA title uh, Russia, Russia's Alexander Besputin undefeated at 10 and 0 with AKOs he de defeated Alan Sanchez via TKO in the ninth round minute 44 uh, I was very impressed with Besputin uh, very aggressive left-handed uh, strong strong right jab Good straight left hook. I mean, good straight uh, left. Um, Sanchez from Mexico wasn't really in the fight. Uh, really was not into the fight, and um, it was basically just a methodical beatdown. And eventually, in the ninth round, Sanchez on shaky legs wasn't responding. Uh, took a big shot. Uh, a big right left hand and immediately blood just started gushing from the nose and uh, he wasn't responding so the referee stopped the fight in the ninth round at 144. Uh, the fourth fight of the night uh, and only in his third fight uh, Santos Ortega of Sacramento uh, took on Sebastian Baltimore of Tacoma Washington. He only, this was only his third fight. 
that both of these guys are just starting up. I'll take Ortega was all over Baltimore throughout the short bout. But wasn't able to and but wasn't able to stop him. Um, they, all three judges scored in 40-36 on uh, the four round bout. And then on the next bout, Fresno Fresno's uh, own hometown uh, kid, Isidro Ochoa, 5 0 with one KO, took on Puerto Rico's Elio de Jesus. Uh, and he was able to stop him in the third round, two minutes and 14 seconds. And here in the ring right now, we have the military. And it looks like we're about to sing the national anthem. So I'll, I'll go ahead and let you, I'll let this play out so you guys can hear it. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd be so kind to please rise for the presentation of two anthems as we honor the heritage of our fighters in the main event, as well as our nation. Welcome to the ring, our proud men and women in uniform from the United States Marine Corps. It's really nice scene, the military.
that was pretty cool. It's a great atmosphere in this arena, the Save Mart Center. Um, it's not a huge venue. It's, it makes it feel kind of intimate. Uh, it looks like the crowd's filling in now for, for the main last three fights of the televised portion. Um, it's a, a lot of good energy in here, especially a lot of the fans of pressure are waiting for Jose Ramirez, their hometown hero, uh, in the main event. Alright guys, so I'll go ahead and uh, sign off for now, and I'll come back and I'll give you guys updates on the last three fights, see how it went. Alright guys. Antonio Orozco walking into the ring right now for the main event against Jose Ramirez Jr. Currently now at the main event, just to give you an update on the previous two fights. Uh, in the co-main event, James uh, Herring, also known as the Fighting Marine, defeated at a uh, John Morade of the Philippines team managed to 100 to 90. And now here comes Jose Ramirez Jr. So Sir Ramirez Jr. and they're coming into the ring right now. I'll let you guys hear the introductions. And then uh, after that, we'll continue with the update of what happened in the fight. All right, guys, stay tuned.
fight. Ramirez versus Orozco. This was just being ringside with the energy here was amazing. So just all three judges scored the fight, 119-107 for Ramirez Jr. But uh, Orozco put on a hell of a show. Um, I'll talk a little bit about more once I leave the arena because it's loud as hell in here. All right, guys. I'll be right back. Antonio Orozco's comments after the fight. I think very telling of his character inside and outside of the ring. Showing her that he got real grit. Now here's Jose Ramirez.
Jose Ramirez Jr. I'm going to try to get some post fight stuff for you guys if they're available. And I'll try to add it to this podcast. That way you guys can get as much content and behind the scenes as, as possible. Well, guys, uh, fight card is over. There wasn't a press, con- uh, press conference or fight. None of the fighters decided to come out and talk. Um, so I'm outside the St. Mars Center, waiting for my Uber, Lyft. Um, my Greyhound doesn't actually leave until about 2 a.m., so I have about three hours to kill. So I'm probably going to head out to a Denny's. It's the only thing I know that's open 24 hours a day. And uh, work on the site, get those articles published for you guys, get those videos out, whatever I got. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy them. Man, if you guys saw that fight on TV, I don't know how it was on TV, but being there in the arena with that atmosphere, um, obviously Ramirez being the hometown boy, everyone was behind him. He was just ripping shots. The whole fight, full power, you know, keeping up his pace, never slowing down. Just basically just attacking, attacking. He was going for that knockout. Uh, but big, 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 big respect to uh, Arosco. Arosco stood there, stayed in the fight, tried to fight fire with fire. And uh, it worked for him at times. Yeah, he landed some big shots on Ramirez. Ramirez, as great of an offensive fighter as he is, he does. His liability is his defense. Um, but what protects him from that liability is definitely his chin. The man's got a chin. He can take a punch because Arosco was definitely landing some. And uh, Ramirez was just walking right through. Um, but Arosco, man, Jesus Christ. Got dropped twice. Once with a right hook to the head. Then later in the fight, Ramirez threw three left hooks in a row, a triple left hook. And for sure I thought... Arosco was done, the grimace on his face, I thought he may not be able to recover, uh, the grimace, is on, like I said, the facial expression being so close to the ring, um, but he got up, he was taking deep breaths, uh, he survived the round, and he ended up surviving the fight, and uh, he, he gave Ramirez a great, great, great battle, um, one of the greatest live boxing um, events I've been to. Um, the scorecards in my opinion were a little bit off. 119 to 107 is a bit egregious. Um, I don't believe Arosco was close enough to win the fight obviously but I do de- I do think that he may have won at least three four rounds. I mean come on. The guy was in there. He was digging away. He was landing. He was countering. He was throwing hooks. Um with that being said, I guess in the end it doesn't really matter. Ramirez deserved the win. And uh, he, he's still currently the WBC champion. Definitely, he's got a great home fan base here in Fresno. 
the 14,000 people in that arena were rocking, rocking and rolling, and uh, great atmosphere. About, I believe, in the eighth or ninth round, some of the attention came away from the fight because there was a huge brawl in the stands. I mean, and it was an all pro Ramirez section, which was, you know, befuddling to me. I'm like, they're all wearing the same shirt, they're all wearing the same hat. They're obviously all here to support Ramirez. They're all in a group. They're all supposed to be brothers in this. And somehow or another, a couple of them or three or four or five of them ended up brawling in the stands. It took security about five minutes to break up. And that took away from about a round and a half. I mean, I was, just, I was looking at the fight, but seems like most of the media section is standing up and looking at the crowd. I don't understand why. They're there, they're there to cover a fight, not a, a professional fight, not a not a bar fight in the stands. But, uh, I mean, I admit I looked. I looked a little bit. But, you know, 15, 20 seconds, I get it. Two fat guys. Probably had too many that got this. And I don't know, maybe someone said something about the one of the, each other's mamas or something. Who knows what the hell happened. All I know is that was a brawl. It was going crazy. And, uh, but the real action was in the ring. The real credit goes to the fighters. Um, also wanted to talk about a little bit about the, the weigh-in today. Because I did see it online while I was here outside the arena waiting. waiting. And uh, I'm pretty interested in that. David Lemieux, O'Sullivan fight. O'Sullivan's really under the skin of Lemieux. You know, being from Ireland, he's got that bravado, kind of McGregorish, Conor McGregorish in a way. He's got that old timey mustache. He's got the old timey pose with the extended right hand fist. Lemieux didn't take kindly to it. Kind of got a little bit of a scuffle. Um, and then, of course, Canelo. And Triple G both make weight. Triple G calmly walking to his mark for the face off. Canelo walks past his mark right into the face of Triple G. Triple G doesn't take kindly to it, puts his forehead on Canelo's forehead, and there a little bit of drama ensues. Then there's a little bit of shoving by Reynoso. Most of, most of the shoving came from uh, Canelo's camp, actually. The Reynoso, uh, his dad, Kepo, I saw it got in there a little bit, pushing Abel in the back. And Triple G calmly looked at them, calmly turned around, and just walked away. Because he knows the real fight's going to be tomorrow. And uh, that he's not into that whole drama game and... I know it's still kind of frustrating to me that Canelo, through this whole promotional process, didn't want to do a face-off for any of the promotional events. It's just weird, right? To me, it's like I, it's not even a disrespectful thing. To me, it's like a guilt thing. Um, you know, did he take performance-enhancing drugs? Well, he obviously failed two tests, so we know he had something in the system. He claims it was from the tainted meat. I mean, but as a professional fighter, I mean, if you have any, if you have two brain cells to rub together, and you know your country has tainted meat, why are you eating the meat from your country? Um, so I don't buy that excuse. Also, the first fight, he looked so much bigger as far as uh, just the size of his neck, and you know, just just looked more, just bigger. You know, he looked more like a WWE fighter than a boxer. And this, this way in, he came in super, super lean, um, looking more like a boxer. So I don't think he's on any PEDs. Obviously, he can't be. Um, he's being tested um, a little bit more stringently, but you never know. Um, Triple G is getting older. Canelo is, getting, is in his prime physically uh, as a young man. 28 years old so you never know triple g may grow old overnight canelo may go in there and just take over and uh you know catch triple g at the correct time in his career uh, on the downside or 
Triple G will be Triple G. And uh, he'll come in, come forward, and if Canelo backs up what you know what he's saying in terms of that he's going to go for the knockout, I think he's going to, I believe Canelo will get caught. Uh, he will get broken down, and I believe he will get knocked out late, probably uh, between the 9th and the 11th round. He'll He's going to get caught with something. He's going to gas. Um, Canelo's never been a type of fighter that just throws... A bunch of punches. He does. He doesn't have that type of stamina. He's more of a explosive fighter. He'll throw explosive combinations. And then he'll move. Explosive combination. And then he'll move. He doesn't really have the capacity, in my opinion, to out punch Triple G if he wants to go that way. And if he does go that way, I think he's gonna get. He's gonna get taken apart little by little. Those body shots. Those straight right hands are eventually gonna get to him. And I think in the back of his mind, he knows that he was on some something. And that something helped him take those punches. This time around, he may not be on that, on that whatever he was taking. So maybe that might be weighing on his mind a bit. And maybe that's why he put on a little bit of that bravado at the weigh-in, trying to kind of play some mental game, trying to intimidate Triple G. But at this point, Triple G is a heat-seeking missile. He's a robot. A robot punching machine, seek and destroy, Terminator. You're not gonna, you're not gonna intimidate him with a little face to face, you know, taunt. So we're in for a treat, guys. We're in for a treat tomorrow. I'm really looking forward to it. I want to post this uh, podcast. I hope you like it. I, you know, I want to do something different. Not just every single podcast, me talking for about 20 minutes about the results of fights and uh, things like that. I want to, wanted to give you guys a behind-the-scenes perspective, what what I went through today. You know, literally try to record from from the time I got on the, on the Greyhound bus to the time I got in the arena. During the arena, hopefully the sound quality is okay. Um, you guys got to hear the national anthems. You guys got to hear the um, announcers, the crowd ro- roaring in the background. And me trying to get through. Hopefully you guys could hear me. Uh, you got the results. And uh, you got an overall feel of uh, how it works. So basically now, um, like I said, I'm probably just going to go hit up a Denny's. Just get a bunch of coffee. I'm not really that hungry. And uh, try to stay awake. Then uh, grab a lift or an Uber. Hop back on the ground on the, uh, the the ground. Then I'll probably be. I'm gonna be. I'm supposed to be home by 6:40 a.m. Um, so basically 24 hours because I left at 6:50 a.m. and I'm gonna get home at 6:40 a.m. So 24 hours I've been uh, involved in this fight as far as traveling and working. But I love it. It's what I love to do. It's a, my passion. That's the reason I started the Boxing Wire. That's the reason I started the Boxing Wire podcast. Well, that's the reason I'm, I'm talking to myself right now, basically. Uh, I want to say thank you again. Uh, at the beginning of the show, I mentioned that uh, we're getting so many listeners from diff- so many different countries. So welcome people from India, Pakistan, Hong Kong, uh, Argentina, uh, Brazil, Russia. I mean... So all you all you folks, hopefully you've uh, subscribed so every single new episode goes directly into whatever feed you're listening to. Once again, share with your friends, tell them we're on iTunes, Google Play, they, any anywhere you can listen to a, to a podcast, you can listen to it and, and you can listen to it directly on the website theboxingwire.com. You just go to theboxingwire.com hit the podcast uh, link all the shows are there you can listen to from episode 1 to this will be episode 14 and uh, yeah and then just just to, to just to remind you guys thank you to my three new sponsors uh, touch a modern wonderful website uh, for men uh, so you know Christmas is coming whether you want to shop for yourself, get yourself some nice gadgets, some nice watches, grooming things, just you know, get stuff for your dad, your grandpa, your your boy, your son, 
your daughter, you know, if she's, if, if, you know, if she's kind of a, a boyish girl, you know, you know what I mean. Uh, things like that. I also want to thank uh, fanatics.com. Wonderful sports uh, apparel and uh, website. You've got every kind of jersey, every kind of sports team apparel, hats, jerseys, t-shirts, everything you can imagine to support your team, uh, to support uh, your sport. Uh, so go to the website. The banners are on the top, the very top. You can't miss them, all three. And then lastly, stars. The premium channel stars. They have a seven-day free trial. It's a great offer right now. Take advantage of it. It's Friday, like I said. Most most of you hopefully don't have to work Saturday or Sunday. Um, you're probably going to be watching the fight Saturday, but after the fight, you and and your partner, you and your girl, or you and your boyfriend, uh, get that free trial. See some movies. They got Spider Man. They got Jumanji. And they got a bunch of old stuff too, old classic great movies that when you see the, you know, what's on tap, you're like, oh my god, I love that movie. And you watch it again and try it out for seven days. If you like it, I believe you, you pay like eight ninety nine a month. If not, call on day six or, I mean, go to the website on day six. Just click cancel, just as easy as you click um, apply. And that's it. You're done. You're, and then... All three, and what's most, most important is you're going to help the show. You're going to help theboxingwater.com because um, you're going to help me make this show better. Uh, the more the more revenue we can get, you know, if we can, if I can break even, I'll be happy, and uh, I can buy better equipment. I can get more interviews. I can travel to different venues across the country. Um, cause obviously being in the Los Angeles area, most of the, most of the events I cover are within Southern California. Um, uh, thank you again to, to you guys. You can either go to the boxingwire.com, click either one of the banners, or if you want to go directly to each site, uh, you can go to the boxingwire.com slash stars theboxingwire.com T-O-M T-O-M actually uh, touch of modern so boxingwire.com slash T-O-M and theboxingwire.com slash fanatics and it, they, basically those have a lot more ads so specifically if you're looking for something specific you'll be able to find it there a little bit easier than just hitting the generic button um, please support. Please follow on Twitter. You guys got to start sending me messages on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram. It's all the boxing wire. You can't miss me. Um, thank you guys again. Have a great night, uh, a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening, whatever time you're listening. Thank you for listening. And uh, I'll probably be coming out with another one, another one. Another uh, podcast in a couple of days because of the uh, Triple G Canelo fight, so I'm definitely going to have some thoughts on that. Uh, I'll be, I'm can't wait to share it with the, with the audience. All right, guys, thanks for listening again. This has been the Boxing Wire podcast.